Hello guys, this is your friend again January. So today we are going to talk about how to assemble an IoT device. So what is now an IoT device? So in the Internet of Things, a thing can be defined as an object that has a unique identifier and which can send or receive data over the network. So we have different examples of what can be a thing in the Internet of Things, might you have smartphone, might you have smart TV, computer, refrigerator, car, and so on. We might you have lamp, we might you have uh, cooking appliances, we might you have many. So, an IoT device now is a thing that can be connected on the Internet and send information about themselves or about the environment. So, from this definition, we can infer from uh, IoT device, it must have network connection, it must have sensing capabilities, and it must have the capability to communicate the data collected uh, with the other devices. So we have uh, different examples of uh, So today we are going to talk about assembling an IoT device. A thing in the IoT or in the Internet of Things can be defined as a, an object, a physical object that may have a unique identifier which can send or uh, receive the data over the network and which must have the sensing capabilities. So we have different examples of uh, what may be thing in the Internet of Things and this include smartphone, Smart TV, computer, refrigerator, car, drone, cooking appliances, um, electrical lamp, and so on. We have many devices. So now, an IoT device, it, it, it can be defined as a, a thing that can have an internet connection and which can send or send the information about the service or about the environment. We have uh, different examples of a night device and uh, these include a home automation device that allows remotely monitoring the status of appearances and controlling the appearances. So you might uh, assemble or build an IoT device that will monitor the health of the cooking appliances and uh, even you can monitor the, st the status about them. So we might have uh, an industrial machine which can send the information about its operation and uh, have monitoring data to server. You can have a car that send information about its location by using GPS to the cloud-based service. You can have a wireless enabled wearable device integrated with sensors that measure the data about the person, such as number of steps worked, and send the data to the cloud-based server. So, what is the requirement of an IoT device? So, an IoT device must have sensing capabilities. An IoT device must have the computation or processing capability. An IoT device must have 
the uh, network connection or communication capabilities. An IoT device must have the storage capabilities of the data collected. These are the main requirements of an IoT device, and of course, you can come up with the other requirements. So an IoT device has a different component. So these include input. Yes, please. please. Yes, please. Back on requirement. Go ahead. Do you have a question on this? Yes, continue. Okay, thank you. So now we are talking about the component of a IoT device. I have mentioned we have the the peripherals or interfaces for sensors. An IoT device must have a physical port where we can connect the sensors, where we can connect the actuators and so on, and this port or this interface are called the input output interface. Could you mute your microphone please? An IoT device must have interfaces for the network or the internet connectivity so it must contain this uh, network connectivity so that it can send data collected to the neighboring devices or it can receive the data from the other device via this network connectivity a multi device must have a memory and storage interfaces so you may see have like uh, where you can uh, insert the external memory to a device you can have the internal memory you can have the eprom you can have uh, alarm um uh, alarm and uh, uh, so on and now the device must have processing device it must have a cpu we we, we can't have another device Vote a CPU and uh, you all know a CPU or central processing unit is a computation device for uh, an IoT device. We can have the audio and the video interfaces where you can uh, lead the record the audio from the environment or even you can record the image from the environment. So some of the IoT devices um, have the RG45 as the Ethernet cable. They have the USB port, which can help you to connect it with your computer. We, they, they, they might have the SPI. So when you say like the for the input output interfaces for sensors and actuators, it includes different communication protocols. And this includes fuzzy, universal, asynchronous receiver transmitter as URT. We have a serial peripheral interface as the SPI. We have I squares as the integrated. Inter-integrated circuit, we have can we have the HDMI for audio and the video device and so on. These are the main components of an IoT device. So we have different device platforms. We have PyCom, PyCom Lopin. 
When they say the PyCom Lopi, this is a, a microcontroller that has a Bluetooth communication capability. It has the Wi Fi communication capability. It has the LoLa communication capability. It has the Sigfox communication capabilities. And it can be programmed, of course, by using Python. So this is a, a small device. Let me try to show you how the PyCom, PyCom Lopi looks like. PyCom Lopi. Let's look on the images. So this is how the the PyCom PyCom Lopi looks like. So let's try to click on it. So this PyCom Lopi, you can see the PyCom Lopi. It has a Bluetooth. Bluetooth, it has the LoLa communication, it has Sigfox, it has Wi-Fi development board. So if you want to, uh, to have a device which can be programmed by using the Python and it can support a Bluetooth, can support LoLa, can support Sigfox, can support Wi-Fi, the PyCom Lopi, is the candidate so you can uh, see it okay now we do have uh, raspberry pi so the raspberry pi um, it is a uh, a computing device or uh, a small computer on a ship. Again, this Raspberry Pi, as we will see later, it can be programmed uh, by using the C programming or Python, but mainly it is known as, although uh, it is mainly programmed by using the Python programming languages, and we're gonna program it by using Python, not something else. So, we do have the microcontroller platforms. Within microcontroller platforms, we have many. We have uh, Arduino Uno. We have uh, Node MCU, and uh, we have uh, the other many devices. We will see one by one. Have you started to use the Node MCU? Yes or not? Yes. Okay, perfect. So we have uh, different hardware interfaces for uh, IoT development boards or platforms. We have uh, universal serial bus, USB, if you can. Uh, Look at the microcontroller, Ada, Arduino series, or uh, you can look at the Raspberry Pi, you can uh, have the USB port, and this USB port, it allows your uh, development body to be interfaced with your controllers, and it allows the computers to upload the um, source code into the device. Mm -hmm. We do have the general purpose input and output pins. These general purpose input and the output pins, some of them they are analog pins, the other one are the digital pins. The analog are there, or they allow the analog sensors to capture data from the environment and uh, later they are, they are converted by the analog to digital converters into digital signal. So
so that they can be processed by the CPU. The other one will have the digital pins, which can be the input or the output for the environment. And the, most of the time, they are interfaced with the digital sensors or the actuators. So these GPIO pins, some of them, they can be, they can support the pass width for modulation. So if I say the pass width for modulation, it means it is the way of using the digital pins in the analog modes. Only, normally the digital pins, they can only provide two levels of signals, either on and off, or zero and one. But sometimes we have the need of controlling the analog devices or the analog actuators. I can give an example, like in, sometimes you want to control like the, the motor, you want to control the DC motor, you want to control the speed of uh, the speed of the air condition moving device. So at this time, you have to control the brightness of uh, the home lighting system. Here you need now to provide different values, different continuous values for controlling this kind of device. So this device cannot be controlled in the normal way by applying the on and off or zero and one data, they need a range of different values, which we call the analog values. But you don't have the analog output for this um, IoT board. So for uh, implementing the analog control via the digital pins, we use the techniques that is called the pass width for modulation, where it allows those devices to be controlled in analog way by using the digital pins. So we have different hardware interfaces, we call the interfaces or communication protocols for the IoT Boss, this we can call it hardware interfaces. Yes, okay. Or sometimes we call it communication, communication protocols. These communication protocols, they are of uh, three types. We have I square C, we have uh, UART, we have SPI. So let's try to uh, go through into details for each and every one. The first one is called the inter integrated circuit or uh, briefly I square C. This is a serial bus that uses a protocol that enables multiple devices or modules to be assigned a discrete addresses on that bus. We're gonna go through this into details very soon. We have another one called the universal asynchronous receiver transmitter devices that translate the data between the CEO and the parallel forms at the point where the data is uh, acted on the processor. We do have the serial peripheral interface, which are the buses that improve the master slave architecture with a single master and a full duplex communication. So let's try to explain each and every one in the next slide.
son URT o lo universo asynchronous receiver transmitter it is the IoT communication protocol or uh, IoT board communication protocols. It is a, a serial communication. When we say it is a serial, it means it allows one bit be transmitted at a time. No more than one bit can be transmitted at the same time. It allows only one one by one to be transmitted. And uh, it contains the two-wire communication protocol. It means if you are to implement or to use this communication protocol, you must have two-wire communication. Then data format at a transmission speed are configurable. It means you can change data format and even you can change its a, its a speed. Then this is the difference between the parallel communication and the serial communication. When I say the parallel communication, it means like a, a byte can be transmitted at once within only one clock or one clock cycle. It means it allows multiple data or multiple bits to be transmitted at the same time. Then we have uh, serial communication. For uh, serial communication, we can allow the one byte to be transmitted through one port from a um, source device to destination but only one bit can be transmitted at a time then we say it is now uh, asynchronous so what is asynchronous when you say asynchronous it means the transmitting device and uh, receiving device they are not synchronized there is no clock pause for synchronizing the transmitting device and receiving device okay when you say some systems are synchronous it means they don't have any clock pause for synchronizing the transmitter and the receiver. But for a synchronous device, they have a clock pass which has to govern the data transmission. So, for U8 communication, I told you that mainly we do have two wire communication. We need the TX pin, RX pin. The transmitter pin of the transmitter is connected with the, the receiver pin of the receiver. And the receiver pin of the transmitter is connected the to the transmitter of the receiving device. And uh, again, you have to connect both grounds of the two, two communicating device. So this is how the frame or the data is transmitted between the two devices that uses the UH communication. So first, the two communicating devices, they have to agree on the starting and stopping beats. 
this is the way of implementing the synchronization between the transmitter and the receiver or having over control on the transmitting transmitted byte because the receiving device has to know the byte has a full received or not so because we are not having any clock pass what we do actually is to have these two bytes starting bytes and the stopping byte and uh, we may have the other bit which is a uh, Party bit, it can be there or the, it cannot be there, it is a, an optional. It is only there for verifying if no packet has uh, been lost. So, and the byte you have to transmit, um, it contains only 8 bytes. So, we mentioned that this communication is as this communication it uses the simplex half a duplex and a full duplex when i say the simplex communication it means only the transmitting device we have only the transmitting device and receiving device but the transmitting device cannot be the receiving device it means always the transmitter will send the information to the receiver but there is no vice versa the receiving device cannot send any information to the transmitter so who can give me an, an example of uh, Simplex communication. Hello? Come back again. Come back again, please. One of the examples of simplex is military funds. Military funds. So, do you want to say the military funds? You can communicate, but you can you, you can't have the feedback. No, no, no. It will have duplex, but simplex is radio. Okay, thank you for radio communication, for uh, TV broadcasting. Mm, your receiver, your TV or your radio, you can uh, receive the information from the from the studio, but you can't provide any feedback. That is an, a good example of a simplex communication. So for a half duplex, both the devices can play the role of the transmitter and the receiver, but not at the same time. I think you have provided a good example of half duplex like those uh, meter devices sometimes we call it i don't know the the other the, the, their proper names but what you know if someone want to communicate you provide your message but you can't receive the other message at the same time only you call someone after calling, there is the agreed uh, agreed on terms 
you can use for indicating that you end up by by providing the message like over. When you say like the over, the other part is going to become now the transmitter. Now you are going to become the receiver. Then if you end up his message, you say over again, you're going to become again the transmitter and the vice versa and so on. Then we can have the full duplex where both devices can transmit and receive at the same time. So a good example of the the full duplex. Who can give me a good example of a full duplex? Our mobile phone. Our mobile phone. Excellent. Our mobile phone can transmit and receive at the same time. You can make discussion your friend on phone calling without asking someone to stop or, or to keep quiet. And it's the same thing. What we are, we are doing here, it is the full duplex. I can talk and listen at the same time to what you are talking about, even the same to you. We have again different disadvantages of the U.S. communication. First one, the size of the data frame is limited to a maximum of nine nine bits. The other one, it doesn't support multiple slave or multiple master system. So this means what? Any communicating device, let me say you have the master is the microcontroller. It cannot communicate to more than one device through one communication interface. It can't be possible. And even multiple controllers cannot talk with one, one slave or one sensor at the same time. It can't be happen. Like you, are, you, you want, let me say, you want like um, two microcontrollers to push the message or data to SD card at the same time. It can't be happen. They have limited the speed for the application which require the higher data transmission. Again, it is an issue, it is a problem. They don't have the higher speed for data communication. So we have mentioned that ULT doesn't have a clock signal for synchronizing the transmitter and the receiver. So how now this, this synchronization is happening? So in order to implement the synchronization, this UAT communication uses, as we have mentioned, the, the synchronized beats, the starting beat and the stop beat. And also, they have also pre agreed data transfer speed. The, the, the transmitter, it knows, it, it tells the receiver, this is, this is the baud rate that you are going to use, number of beats that has to be transmitted uh, that has to be transmitted per second let me say if i go to program like your uh, microcontroller and uh, this microcontroller is interfacing with, with the computer 
you are using this uh, type of communication and uh, you remember when you are, you, are, you are providing the settings in your IDE, you have to indicate the baud rate that you are using so that the two communicating devices must agree on how many bits that you are going to transmit per second. So if the baud rate is, is, doesn't match, the receiver and the transmitter are not matching. And some of the data sent from the transmitter will not reach the receiver properly and off, will not reach the receiver. Some tables, uh, let me say you are using the, the serial monitor where the the board rate is different from the board rate that your hardware your microcontroller is using. What happened? The data that you read from your serial monitor is not what you are looking for because the transmitter and the receiver are not synchronized. So every time this situation happens in microcontroller communication, when you are using the serial monitor and uh, your microcontroller, you have first to predefine the number of uh, speed, the number of uh, bits that has to be transmitted per second. You have the this baud rate, and the other one you have to agree on the starting point at the stop point of a data transmission. You can say data will be, will, will, will be transmitted when, when the data pass, it comes from high to low. It trans, trans, transition from the high to low, it, in, it indicates the starting point, then the remaining high it indicates the transmission has stopped. These are the convention between the transmitter and the receiver for ensuring that what has been transmitted is what gonna be received by the receiving device. We have the SPI communication. For the SPI communication, it is called the Serial Peripheral Interface. This is a full duplex. Again, it is a serial communication protocol. Apart from the U.S. communication, it is SPI. It uses the synchronous communication protocol. It means now the transmitter and the receiver are being synchronized by using the clock pulse. Okay, so this type of communication it improves forward communication at the minimum. It means the master can have four ports at, the, uh, at even the same time the slave can have four wire communication. It uses so-called master slave. The coordinating device is called the master and the sensors they are being called the, like the slave. These are why they use it for short distance communication and the primarily in embedded system.
as I was talking, this is serial peripheral interface. It uh, implements so called master and the slave architecture, and uh, always it uh, uses four wire communication protocol. Then, first wire it contains the clock, it means the clock will be always generated by the master device. Let me say, if we are in the battery system, now the microcontroller will be the master device. Then it initiates the clock pass. This clock pass, it will synchronize the data transmission between the receiver and, uh, and the transmitter. Now, we have another port called MOSI. On both devices, we have MOSI, and even on the microcontroller, we have the MOSI. MOSI, it means the master master output slave input it means the master will use this port for sending the information or a command to the slave use it is one way communication from the master to the slave we do have another called MISO. Follow MISO communication, it comes from the slave to the master. It is called master input slave output. This port, it is being used by the slave for sending the information from the slave to the master, only it is one way, it is not two ways. Then we do have the uh, the activated low signal called SS of select chip signal. This signal, it is being used for selecting the slave. One master can talk with many slaves. We can have we can have let me say we can here have one master, one microcontrollers connected to more than one sensor. It can be connected to five sensors okay so if it is now connected to five sensors and only this master slave master device it it, it uses only the same port for uh, clock mostly missile for controlling these sensors and talk with them how do you think now this coordination is going to talk take place how the slave will know it is the real one to talk with the master so this is implemented by using the select line so it means now if we are communicating with five sensors the master must have um, Select uh, five select lines. Each select line is it is uh, connected to correspond the slave or sensor sensor node. So when now the line for the slave is active low, the corresponded slave it is the one to be talking with the master. Always these slaves are in sleep mode but for the slave 
to be active, the master must send the low activated signal from SS port. So I'm saying that this SPI communication it has four ports. One, first one is a mercy for allowing the master to send the command or the information to the slave. And the second one is the missile, master input, slave output, which the slave uses for sending the feedback or data to the master. And you have the clock port for synchronizing the transmitter and the receiver. And we do have now the SS or chip select lines for selecting or activating the communicating slaves when you have multiple slaves to communicate with. So internally, the master and the slave, they have so-called shift register and the large flip-flop for implementing or performing its jobs. Only when the clock pass is detected, the data inside the shift registers has to be shifted. Then, how does SPI operate? For the SPI, there are serial clocks Chip select lines of the serial data in and uh, serial data out. For both the master and the slave, there is only one master. The number of slaves depends on the number of the chip select lines of the master. Here now, it means not every master can accommodate multiple slaves in SPI communication. So it depends on the hardware interfaces of the master and the how or the expectations from the manufacturer. If the master has one chip select energy, it can only accept one slave. If he has a five select lines, it means it can accept now it can accept now five saves and so on. Now as I was saying now, yeah, we do have uh, two types of uh, SPI configurations. First one is called independent slave configuration, and the other one is called daisy chain configuration. For the independent slave configurations, you can see here we do have uh, a master with uh, three select lines. It means it can only accommodate three slaves. Then each clock, the clock is clocking at the same time both three slaves. The most is connected to both most of the slaves. The missile port is connected again to all missile ports of the slaves, but each slave has its own select lines. So if chips select S1 is low activated, it means only the slaves one 
will be active. The other saves will be in sleep mode for power saving. If the chip select S2 is activated, only slave 2 is activated. The other saves are in sleep mode. If the chip select S3 is activated, only the slaves in sleep will be active, the other ones will be in sleep mode. No more than one slave can be activated at the same time in independent slaves configuration. So at the right side, we do have so called this chain configuration. Here we have only one select line, but we do have the three slaves. How the communication will happen? Again, we do have one clock for the three slaves. We do have one chip select lines for uh, both slaves. We have the most of the master, it goes to the most of the slaves one, then the missile of the slaves one, it goes to the most of the slaves two, and so on. And the missile of the last slaves, it goes to the missile of to 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 the to, to the missile of the master. So let's look at the example or where this configuration can happen. Let me say now. Here we have the information stored in three devices. So, what is going to happen now? And you have three bytes. Slave the one, it contains only eight bytes. Slave two, it has Eight byte data and the slaves three it contains eight byte data. It contains this information, this 24 byte data. Then the master wants to read this information. So what will happen? All of the saves here will be activated. Then for for the First, eight clock pass. The information will be pushed from the from the master to the slaves one. After the eight clock pass, the next eight clock pass, the 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 information from uh, save the one will be pushed into the save the one by using the missile of save the one into the mercy of the save the two. For the next clock pass, the next eight clock pass, the information from the slaves two will be pushed into slaves three and so on. You remember the master here is using the shift register and the slaves are using the shift register. As the master pushes eight bytes, eight bit into saves, saves one, it means the data of saves one will be pushed into again saves two 
and data from slaves to be pushed into slave uh, three, and the data of slaves three, three will be pushed into master. For the next eight clock pass, the data from slaves two again will be pushed into slave three, and the previous co uh, content of slave three will be pushed into the master again. And for the last eight clock passes, the last content of the slave three, which was the original content of the slave one, will be pushed into the master. At this time, it means the three the three bytes of data from the three slaves are being pushed into the master. That is how the master or the microcontroller can read the data from the SD cards. So we have uh, here different examples of the SPI devices. We do have the memory like EEPROM, it can support the SPI communication. We can have the real-time clock, it can support the SPI. We can have the analog to digital converter, it can support SPI, digital to analog converter, displays like uh, LCD. We can have the the sensors like temperature pressure sensors they can support the spi you can have the memory card you can have the sd card and even the other microcontrollers now we do have so-called inter integrated circuit or i this is a half duplex communication. It allows only the data to be transmitted between the master and the slaves in two ways, but not only at the same time. It is a synchronous communication protocol. It means it uses a clock pulse for synchronizing the transmitting device and the receiving device, or for synchronizing the transmitter and the receiver. So it is a multi master multi slave. Here we can have multiple master communicating with one slaves or we can have the multiple slaves communicating to one master we can have we can have for example Two microcontrollers which want, want to write the information on the same LCD. This is an example of the multiple master one slave scenario. We can have one master, one microcontroller collecting data from five, five sensors. This is, this is an example of the one master and the multiple slave configuration is. Of course, this is what you use for a short distance, especially in embedded communication system. So it is about you to choose the best communication protocol among i SPI, and UAT communication. It will depends on you.
So this is uh, an example. Hello, teacher. Hello? The teacher, I want to ask you the, if we will need the MISO when we are communicating the Arduino and the, and the LCD. You want to know if he, he, you are in? We will need the MISO. Yes, of in course. Miso, miso. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, the reason why I ask that question, uh, we have seen that the master it will, will communicate with the the input devices yes. as you as you call the slaves. Yes. Uh, so I want to know if the, we will need the miso for output devices. For for output devices, what do you want to mean for output devices? Because because in here is CD, if we really need the feedback, which is back to the to the to the Arduino. So uh, for, for the LCD, you can have the data which can be sent from the from the microcontroller to the LCD as the data request, isn't it? Mm. That is will be transmitted via the port called MOSI, master, mm. master output slave input. But when the, there is the LCD want to communicate the data to the microcontroller, we use the port code MISO. You can ask me which kind of data that the LCD can communicate to the microcontroller. That's what you are asking. Yes. So, so I, 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 I think here the LCD it can send some like the acknowledgement, acknowledgement. Because there must, be, there must be some synchronization and the master must be able to know if what transmitted is being received. It is not the kind of data like the sensor is going to send it to the microcontroller. But of course, when you're implementing the SP communication, all of the four posts have to be used. So here in high school communication, uh, we are saying we can have multiple microcontrollers and uh, or, or or master. Then we can have multiple slaves. Here we have um, a scenario of uh, this architecture. We do have only two wire communication. One wire is SDA, which means serial data. The other one is the clock. Only we need only two wires for the communication. Then the pay flags here, uh, they are representing in better system, the sensors. So how now these data are being transmitted between the master and the slaves. You remember the I squares communication it accepts multiple slaves, okay? And it only has only one port for data transmission and one port for clock pass. How do you think five sensors can send the data to the microcontroller via only a single line, a single port? So what we do, those sensors must have the addresses, okay? Each sensor 
must have addresses. Each slave must have the addresses. Then, for initiating the communication, we must have the starting condition. The starting condition, it is where the SDA, SDA communication, it goes from the high to low signal before the clock goes from the high to low. This is indicate the starting condition. Any device initiate this condition, it indicate it want to initiate the communication. Now, the sec the the second byte, eight bit sequence, it indicate the device or the service address because the master must indicate which device, which slaves am I talking to. Then, within the bit sequence, first eight bit sequence, the master has to it, it indicate the read or write bit. This indicates whether the, the master want to send the data to the slaves or it want to read the data from the slave. When this bit is zero, it means the master is gonna send the information to the slave to the slave device. When this signal is one, it means the master wants to read the data from the slaves. After this 8-bit sequence, the receiving device has to send acknowledgement. That means it has fully received the 8-bit sequence. It's a kind of synchronization. After this acknowledgement, the master it sends the data bit in a packet or a frame of eight bits. Then after each eight bit sequence, the receiver has to send the acknowledgement to the transmitter. When the information is transmitted completely, the there must be the stopping condition. The stopping condition it is an information that indicates the clock goes from low level to high level before the data signal goes from low signal to higher signal. Don't think only, these are only the theoretical we are talking about. It is how physically, how in coding this transmission is being implemented. Sometimes you can have the libraries which is taking care on this. For you, you don't know how the signals are encoded, but that is the something behind the, the I square C transmission. You might have like one microcontroller, then yes, please. Uh, what does the SD in this theory means? What does SDA? Yes. It, it means it's it's a serial data. You want to to communicate between the the master and the slave. The slave and the master has to use the SDA for transmitting the data between the master and the slave. 
Uh, uh, but it's scary. Huh? As he said, it is the crook. Ah, okay. So, then, as I was telling you, every time we must have the starting condition, we must have the stopping condition, we must have the addresses of the slaves, we must have white and red bit for indicating whether the master want to read or send information to the slaves, and you must have always the acknowledgement bit after 8 bit transfer. Then, as I told you, the starting condition always happens um, when the, the condition we have at the left is met and the stop condition happens when the right condition is met. This might be one question of the cut or of the exam, I don't know. You have to understand this. It is not the song, but you have to understand the logic. Here we have now an example of the single master with multiple slaves. For this scenario, as you can as you can see, we do have one master with SDA and uh, SCR as the clock, and every slave has SDA and it has the clock. So each clock of the master has to be connected on the clock of the each slave and each SDA port of the master have to be interfacing on the SDA of each slave again. So the connection between the slaves and the master allows the slaves to short the SD uh, to, to, to short the the lines but there is no way to activate these lines then we need only the resistors we are calling the pull up resistors to connecting the SDA and the clock lines to the VCC. So if you do the connections, then you forget to, to include these pull up resistors, your circuit will fail. Okay? This is very important. We say here, both I square C bus lines SDA and and the clock are operated as open circuit. It means that any device or IC on the network can drive the SDA and SDA low, but they cannot drive them high. So the prop resistor is used for each bus line to keep them high by the default. So, in front of you, you have again this picture of the master slave configurations. We have six slaves, but each slave, as you can see, has its own address. So, for the master to address to any slaves, it has to include 
the addresses of the device in the data transmission or in the message packets. Some guys, you can, you can ask yourself, when could you use the I square C? Of course, you might have like the the, the the ten sensors. Then only you have the available slot for the the sensors. You have only five slots. You have only five ports to connect the sensors. But you remain with the other five sensors in the hands that you have to connect. There are two options. First one is to buy the the another microcontroller so that you can have the more peripherals. Or you can um, use the i square c for allowing those five sensors to be connected to only one single i square c port of your microcontroller. So it allows the to optimize the hardware resources in embedded or in the IoT communication. So you have an example of an I square C communication. We are using a sensor called the G eight zero eight zero G two fifty one. As you can hear, we have the um, mega. If you can see this kind of the centers we are connecting, each and every one has around, uh, if I remember very well, five sensors. But you can see, like uh, around the eight centers, they are connected only on the single port of the microcontroller, which is the I, I square C. If I have a sensor, um, we are connecting the quick port my microcontroller, then you use the addresses to call each and every sensor. So this is the kind of the sensor we are talking about. As you can see, this GY80, it is a code magnetometer. Then it has many sensors. It has the pressure sensors, it, uh, or which is called BMP085. You can see its addresses. It has accelerometer. You can see its addresses. It can have a gyroscope. You can see its addresses. It means it has. It is... Yes, please. What do you mean, GY? It is a sensor. It is a type of a sensor. That contains like uh, four sensors at the same time. Ah, okay. So this can support high square communication. Instead of buying magnetometer, you buy gyroscope, you buy accelerometer, you buy the barometer separately. You can only buy one chip and use the high square and the um, major. Or, or collect the data from these four sensors at once by using only single communication ports. Excuse me, teacher. Yes. Why it, it, it work like DHT? Uh, you can say that it is going to. No, it is not uh, at the same case. Because the G, that, that one of uh, temperature and the immediate sensor we're talking about, it doesn't support the ice glassy because those temperature sensor or the immediate sensor, they don't have their addresses. But here they have their own addresses. They are the sensor specific for this ice glassy communication. Not every sensor can be used here. You can look for the commercial sensors 
reserved it for the I2C communication. Isn't it? So let's try to, to see what, how the GY521, how it looks like. I go here. Let me type now. GY Fifty-two one. Do you see this kind of uh, sensor? It has accelerometer. It has. Gyroscope. This contains both gyroscope. It has accelerometer along measurement, both independently, but based on the around the same axis. But imagine. So you can see this kind of, of, of sensor, it contains gyroscope and the accelerometer. You can uh, it can only allows the users to monitor the gyroscope and the accelerometer only from the single device from the single channel or port of the microcontroller. So yeah, you can have different differences where you can. Uh, Look at what you were talking about. Do, do you have any question, guys? Hey, teacher. Yes, go ahead. Gyroscope Huh? Gyroscope. Gyroscope is kind of sensors. Uh, mm. Let me check uh, for some more information. Zero sensors are known as angular sensors or angular velocity sensors are a device that sends the angular velocity. So do you see they are being used for measuring the velocity or the speed, the, the angular speed? Do you have the information? Yes. Okay. Mm. Do you have any other question? Um. Hello, teacher. Yes, please. Uh, in using serial mm. and the parallel communication, is it their difference in application? Using? Serial or, or parallel communication. Is it there any difference? Yeah. So, of course, when you are using the parallel communication, uh, there is a higher speed. The communication uh, is, uh, it contains the higher data rate speed. But in the serial communication, you have low speed comparing with the parallel communication. It, it, it's like you are, you are to evacuate the certain student from the class by using a, a single a single door where one student can pass it through at a time then you have the other evacuation system where all students are going to go out at the same time do you see where you have the bigger door, where you have the bigger doors the, the, the evacuation speed is going to be very high where you, you have an yellow there, door. The evacuation is going to take a amount of time. 
ariko muri weekend biko na zama ariko ariko zarije abantu we have any other question or we can uh, stop the first session and then we take a break of uh, 15 minutes and then we come back teacher you have a question yes go ahead yeah why use the cd and the sk connected the analog pin don't to use it to connect the digital pin. Why? CD and scale are connected analog pin on Arduino. Why use to connect the digital pin on Arduino? I, I, I don't understand the question, please. You are asking? Uh, Kuchi. Ego? Kuri Arduino. Yes. Scale na CDA yo bitari ho babikonekta kuri analog. Niba bishire kuri digital kuri ama digital pin. Akenshi tsanga wishize kuri A0 cyangwa A kuri A5 cyangwa A4. So those are those are the pins reserved for the high frequency communication. It is not randomly taken. Let me try to show you what you are talking about. Okay. Could you see here? Yes or please? Zoom. I don't know if you can see what uh, yeah. I'm trying to talk about. You can see here the SDA is available on port A4 and the clock is available at the port of A5. So you can't implement this on the other port. This is only reserved for high squarecy communication. And uh, as you can see, here you have like uh, multiple devices are connected on only single oh, port. Okay. Yes, yeah, this is high squarecy communication. Okay. 